A power function is a function that can be represented in the form f of x equals k x to the n power. And in this case, k and n are real numbers, and n, which is the exponent, must be greater than zero. The other thing to note is that k is called the coefficient. Let's look at some examples of even and odd power functions. For some even powers, here we have the graph of y equals x squared in red, y equals x to the fourth in green, and y equals x to the sixth in blue. Now looking at all three of these graphs, you can see that they have some characteristics in common. For example, as your x values are approaching positive and negative infinity, so this arrow means uh, in mathematics that you're approaching. So as your x's are getting really, really big, so as we're going in this direction, and as your x's are getting really, really small, you can see that your function for all of these even powered uh, power functions are all going towards positive infinity. So the way that you write that in mathematics is f of x is approaching infinity. The other thing to note with these power functions is they have three points in common. For the even power functions, these all go through this point, which is negative 1, 1, this point at 0, 0, and this point at 1, 1. So they all have that in common. Let's write that down. So I'll include the points 0, 0, negative 1, 1, and 1, 1. The other thing to note, <clears throat> as the power gets larger, so you can see here with x squared, we're not as flat around x equals 0. But as the power gets larger, so x to the fourth, it gets a little bit flatter around x equals 0 and x to the sixth is even flatter around x equals zero. So the higher the power, the more flat the power function is around x equals zero. So as your power, which in this case we've called the power n, so as that gets larger, the power function flattens out more at x equals zero. So the flatter, the higher the power, the flatter we are here at x equals zero. So I could kind of do a rough sketch of y equals x to the eighth, knowing this is going to be an even power function because again, that exponent is even. I know it's going to have this u shape. It's going to be a lot flatter towards um, x equals zero and it also is going to contain these three points. So let's do those three points. I know I'm going towards positive infinity since this is an even powered function. And again, I'm just a little bit flatter. That would be a rough sketch of y equals x to the eighth. So now let's look at some of the odd powered functions. Odd power functions have this shape. So you can see in red we have x cubed, in green we have x to the fifth, and in blue we have x to the seventh. I like to say this is almost like an Egyptian dance if you think about it with our arms, one arm up and one arm down. So you can see here as our x values are getting large, so as your x values are approaching positive infinity, our function is increasing, so our function is also appro approaching positive infinity. And you can see that as your x values are getting small, so as our x values are approaching negative infinity, your function is going down towards negative infinity. Sometimes you'll actually see this written using limit notation, um, which is just kind of a precursor to calculus. So we would write this as the limit. As your x values are approaching infinity, your function 
is approaching positive infinity. So these two things mean the exact same thing. This is just a different way to write it. I am not going to expect you guys to have to write things in that way at all. Um, the other thing to note, it looks like these all have these points in common. So they have the points, so they share the points negative 1, negative 1. They all go through 0, 0. And then they also go through 1, 1. And then the same thing happens here, where as your n value, so as that exponent gets larger, you can see that these are getting flatter towards towards x equals 0. So as your n value gets larger, the power function flattens out at 0. Okay, and then again, if I were to draw x, y equals x to the ninth power, it's going to go through these three points because it's an odd power function. And it's just going to be a little bit flatter than x to the seventh power, which is the one in blue going up. So that would be my rough sketch of that one. Let's talk a little more about n behavior and what we mean by that. So n behavior is basically what happens as your um, at the endpoints of your function. So in terms of polynomials, what we're doing is we're looking at what's going on with the function as your x values are approaching positive infinity and as your x values are approaching negative infinity. What's happening on either side? Now we just talked about this on the last side, and this was this, and in the examples that I showed on the last slide, we had all of our k values were one because we were looking at things such as y equals x squared, y equals x to the fourth, y equals x cubed, y equals x to the fifth. So this k value, which is that coefficient, was just positive one. So when that k value is positive. If you're dealing with an even power function, your function is going to look like kind of a U, a U shape. Now, and then also with an odd power function, if that K is positive, it's going to look like exactly like this. So as your X values are approaching infinity, your Y values or your function values are going up towards positive infinity. And for the end behavior here, as your X values are going, getting smaller, so as your x values are going towards negative infinity, your function values are going down. For the even powered functions, as our x values were approaching positive infinity and as our x values are approaching negative infinity, in both cases, your function is approaching positive infinity. Looking down, so if we end up changing that, so now if I looked, for example, at y equals negative x squared, now that k value, so that coefficient in front of the power function, is negative. And remember back in the transformations, when we do that, when we have a negative f of x, what this does is it reflects it over the x-axis. So now when you have a k value that's negative for the even power function, it's going to be like an upside down U or a sad face. You can think about kind of the way I, I remember this is if your k is positive, you're happy, you're positive. So you have this smiley face. If your k is negative, you're sad. So you have a frown. So you have this upside down U. Um, for the odd powered functions, just take the graph of the traditional one and again reflect it over that x-axis so you get that part and this part here so it just reflects it over there so now for the end behavior so if I was looking at the odd power functions with a negative constant as a coefficient so now what we would say is as your x values are approaching negative infinity so as I'm getting really small your y values are getting larger so our function values are going towards positive infinity and as our x values are getting larger, so as your x values are going towards positive infinity, your function is going down towards negative infinity. 
So that would be the new end behavior if you were dealing with a coefficient that is negative. Okay, and then for the even powered functions here, we would say as our x values are approaching both positive and negative infinity, your function values are approaching negative infinity. Since as your x's get smaller, your function's going down, and as our x's get larger, your function's also going down. So that's what end behavior is. Now this is going to be really helpful when we're looking at polynomials and figuring out what their end behavior is. So this is something that you definitely are going to want to go back to.